the Upanishad series Living Moment to Moment Two things One is Momentary things which are ephemeral, which are short-lived, limited and there is another phrase living moment to moment. Living moment to moment and living with momentary things are diametrically opposite, two different things. Man lives with momentary things. He rejoices things which are momentary. And this is the reason that there is so much misery so much chaos because whatsoever is momentary is not going to satiate you. By the time you are aware that it is there, it has already gone. This life is almost a flux because it is continuously moving. Like a river it continues to move. And you recall old Heraclitus saying, you cannot enter the same river twice. Because river is not something which is stationary. As we always consider, life is not stationary. People come and tell you things about yesterday, things that they have done yesterday. They apologize for the things that happened in yesterday's yesterday. You was to get something yesterday and the person was not able to deliver it. He is full of apology and he sends you that. These are momentary things because life is almost a flux because it is continuously moving and each moment is slipping out of your hands. What is a river, a flow? Life is a flow. In case of a river, there are two banks that create the river bed. And between these two banks, something that flows the water continuously flowing is not a stationary, it is not a pond, there is a flow. Consciousness is, a, is flow, is constantly changing. Each moment unfolds into the next and the process continues to move on. But by nature man continues to think life is stationary. This moment is stationary. Nothing is stationary. Everything is constantly moving. One moment when it dies, only then a new is born. When a flower dies, and only then, in that process, it becomes seed. Flower cannot give birth to another flower, but seed can do. And seed is born only when the flower dies. 
flower dies, petals fall, and then seed is collected. But when flower is alive, you collect nectar. That is the end of the process. So in the life of a flower which is momentary, you have to be assiduously working, living in that moment, before the flower begins to dry, the honeybees collect the nectar because in their consciousness they know as the moment passes, the nectar that is available in the flower this moment will not be there. So it has to be collected now, there is no time to rest. A moment gone never comes back again. It is very delicate. Nothing is certain, nothing is stable, everything is in a constant movement. Then the flower dries, its petals fall, Seeds are collected, the process continues. This is how life is. If you miss a moment, you miss something. And to live in a moment is a blessedness. You cannot make your abode in this moment momentary world on a place where the ground is shifting. You know sometimes the land on which you want to construct a house is shifting. It cannot, you cannot build the house there because there will come up cracks in the walls and all that. If you make your abode on these shifting sands, it is bound to collapse. It is absolutely inevitable. The collapse is going to happen any moment and you cannot live at peace at all. So when the construction of the house is done, all these factors are taken into account. But in case of life, you cannot make a permanent resting place. You are here for a certain period of time, live the moment when it comes and when it is gone you have no regret because you have lived that moment totally full of awareness. You fall in love and then there is fear about whether the love is going to remain tomorrow or not. And this fear grips you. And because of this fear, you cannot be totally available when the next moment comes. There is a constant fear that your lover may leave you or you may start thinking to leave your lover. So we start making arrangements to stabilize it or make it something permanent. And in that very effort, all joy is lost. Lovers start trying to possess the other so that tomorrow it is still there. But in trying to possess love, you are already destroying it. Love is momentary. It is the whispers of the unknown. It is like the drops of nectar.
nectar which has been flowing from eternity. A poet has said, Noor ki boond hai jo barso se bahti aare hai. It's a drop of nectar that is constantly flowing from the dawn of eternity. It is silence because it creates a silence around you. And if it does not, there is something wrong. Love must create a silence, a silence which is dancing, which is overflowing. You are full within and that silence begins to overflow. And then your gestures, your words, everything becomes a perennial inspiration. But you want to be satisfied with the momentary things, not living moment to moment. You are not even waiting for tomorrow to destroy it. You have destroyed love today because nobody wants to be possessed or thought of as a commodity. Nobody is a thing. To behave with a person as if he or she is a thing is to humiliate the person. It is utterly disrespectful and everybody resists being disrespectful. Hence the fight starts. The desire is for something eternal, cannot be fulfilled in the outside world. You have to embark on a totally a different kind of a journey. Somebody is poor and he thinks that if he becomes rich, he will be happy. But the moment he becomes rich, he is not happy. He is simply more worried. Now he is worried about whether he is going to remain rich or not. Because things go on changing. It is like a wheel that goes on moving. The market goes down price changes, banks go bankrupt, governments become communist and so on. So forth things are happening. Nothing can be certain. There is a constant worry. When he was a poor, at least he used to sleep well. Now he cannot even sleep. But if your gestalt changes from seeking the blessedness in the momentary things to live in the moment, this moment comes in, you live it totally as if that there is nothing beyond this moment. This moment is all. You do not know what will happen the next moment. The satiation that moment will give you, it will be like a drop of noor, a drop of light, a drop of nectar. It will give you so much of satiation that you do not care for the next moment, even if death comes this very moment. I have lived it totally. Through great effort, a person reaches the highest post of the country or in the job becomes the prime minister or the president and then the fear surrounds. Now almost the whole of his life is wasted in reaching the highest position 
to achieve something. Now he clings to the chair, afraid that others are pulling his, him down. There is a long queue of the people who want to be the president or the prime minister of the country. There is immense strife and cutthroat competition and everyone is against everybody else. He cannot rest at peace. He has reached after such a long effort and now that now all that can he can do is to cling to the chair, to that position, to that moment, to somehow survive there. This is what is happening because we are looking outward. We are looking towards the things which are ephemeral and we are trying to seek the blessings seek the nectar of life in momentary things that were there once in a constant flux and they are no more there. The outside world is not going to satisfy because it is constantly a changing world, constantly changing, momentary, and your innermost longing is for that which is eternal. Eternal does not mean permanent. Eternal means that is beyond time and space. Consciousness is the only thing which is beyond time and space and that which is outward, which is ephemeral, cannot be fulfilled, cannot give you the fulfillment. When you are on the circumference, you cannot attain fulfillment. Even when you are on the circumference, you cannot leave your connection with the center. Because you remember the circumference has its existence only because of the center. If you remove the center, the circumference is no more called a circumference. It is called a circumference only in relation to the center. It is the center that defines the circumference. It is the center that defines the circumference. It is your inner life that defines your outer life. All that you are outwardly is defined by, defined by your inner growth. If you have achieved something within, the outer life will be a reflection of that. A flower blossoms, it has something within and that manifests as beauty and the fragrance of the flower. Your outer life will be the beauty and the fragrance of inner happening. So on the outside remain joyful with the moment. However, do not ask that it should be eternal. Nothing can be eternal that which is outward. Live the moment, enjoy the moment as totally as possible. The flower has opened up in the morning is bound to wither away by the evening. It has blossomed with the sunrise and will wither away with the sunset. Rejoice this moment blossoming of the flower. I am not against the flower rejoice, but remember not to cling and hope 
otherwise you will be disillusioned rejoice the moment in the momentary on the outside and search for the eternal deep within that indeed is the message of the masters that is my message and inside you will discover the spring of nectar the immortal the eternal the divine and once you have found that then there is nothing more to be found then all is bliss all is joy life is fulfilled you have arrived home and as an outcome of living to that moment you have attained something which is peace which is solace it is the aroma or the fragrance of the harmony of the heart it is indeed and indeed is his at oneness with the existence all conflicts of the mind are just memories of the past all conflicts of the mind are just memories of the past the mind is no longer divided split or schizophrenic the mind has become an organic unity this is the way to live moment to moment as it comes and it requires tremendous awareness because the moment is so delicate so delicate that it can slip out of your hand any moment you need a different kind of awareness when you are walking when you are having the meals in front of you when love is there it is like the fresh breeze when your palm is open the breeze touches your hand you can feel its coolness and the freshness too the moment you try to make a fist the breeze is no more it slips out such is delicate is that moment you need a different kind of awareness different kind of understanding living moment to moment is blessing